a way to think about doing Christology is that we are mapping the terms of the mystery. We are trying to define, as it were, the plateau of orthodox truth of right Christian doctrine concerning Jesus. So Christology is about trying to see Jesus as clearly and as accurately as possible and that's really not about defining him by equations but rather mapping a mystery. And that leads us into a freedom actually when we are considering Jesus. So let's jump in this time and we're going to actually engage in a little bit of technical theology which hopefully you're going to be okay with and learn a little bit about how not to think about Jesus and then hopefully a way of thinking about Jesus that is more accurate, truthful and helpful. So in the last video we were considering how the one who is you know the God of all things, all knowledge at one side of the ontological chasm could possibly cross this chasm and become finite limited human and in, hidden in the womb of a Middle Eastern teenager without even self-awareness. How can this be so? Well because theologians are always stuck on the question how, let me introduce you to some ideas of some of their thoughts. Now a way that has been proposed of trying to understand how this God could become human and how does that work um, is called kenosis. The theology of kenosis which technically means a self-emptying of God, an excavation of God's life or some of God's life in order for the human experience of Jesus to be legitimate. So let me explain what that means. This goes back to about the 1700s. German theologians really launched hard into this one and then it was picked up by British theologians in the 1800s and now the most modern versions are really enjoyed by what you call the evangelical charismatic church. So the charismatic wing of the church are very much into this part of uh, theology, into kenosis. So what the proposal is is that Jesus as God has all these different attributes and kenosis is the proposal that these attributes are separated. So you have what's called the metaphysical attributes or the transcendent attributes and then you have the moral attributes. So the metaphysical transcendent attributes are God being all-powerful, all-knowing and all-present, the things that obviously only God can be so that's part of the divine identity, is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present. There are other attributes understood in God, though, which would be called his moral attributes, which are God's love, God's goodness, God's justice, God's holiness. So what the proposal of kenosis is, is that God was excavated, he was self-emptied of his transcendent attributes, so that he is no longer all-knowing, all-present and all-powerful, but he is still allowed to be, you could say, loving, just, good, kind, merciful, etc. So on, on the first glance that sounds like, well maybe that's a way to actually make this make sense, that Jesus somehow remains God, but not completely, fully being able to do all the things that God has been able to do, but he's still allowed to do some of the things and keeps his, you know, keeps his identity as God. Now, although at first glance that might seem like a reasonable proposal, unfortunately what it actually does is it drives a bulldozer straight through the middle of classical theism, of orthodox Christian truth as we have known it. Um, because what it does is it wrecks the theology or the doctrine of divine simplicity. And that's one of the essential core prerequisites of good theology, I think. And if you're not familiar with divine simplicity, then go back to the teaching that I did in our Trinity series and you check in with videos two and three and there I try and unpack what divine simplicity is. Summary would be that divine simplicity says that God is not made up of parts, that God is not a collection, a, a conglomerate, a composition of divine perfections. So you can't just sort of take or identify a few of God's attributes and say okay they're going to be disabled or deleted or deactivated while Jesus is human and then later on they can be reinstalled or reactivated as if God, part of God's life can be then shelved and then reapplied. Um, Divine Simplicity says no that's not even possible on a theological or a metaphysical level because God's life is simple, in other words, it is indivisible. Whatever God is, he is completely and absolutely and thoroughly that, that his being is all love, all justice, all power, all knowing, all all being, all present, 
transcendent beyond time and space. So God is all of these things all of the time and cannot be um, put into different files and then you remove some of the files then put them back later. So kenosis, that proposal, I think, although it tries to thoroughly humanize Jesus, what you do though is you completely eject the divinity of Jesus in any meaningful way. So what you do then is you just basically drive off the edge of the plateau of orthodox Christian thought and you end up in a valley of heterodoxy. So uh, that's not, I, I would not recommend kenosis as being a, a healthy or workable theology. Okay, so what would be an alternative? Well, here we have to remember that we can only speak of God by way of analogy. We do not know how the fullness of God's divinity and the absolute experience of true humanity can be thoroughly integrated without compromise. But I think there, there might be a way to think about it, which I believe is more healthy and uh, more accurate. Whatever happens within the life of God in the incarnation has to be uh, you could say natural, it has to be right, it has to be instinctive, uh, and it has to be credible and sincere. How does, how does that work? If God is to become human and remain completely God, and yet not have all the advantages of being God, because if his true human experience is real, then there's something that has to be, you could say, adjusted. All right, here's a, an analogy that might help. Um, with my little boys, I've done lots of wrestling. Most recently, Charlie, especially when Charlie was like three or four, he would absolutely love to wrestle and rugby tackle. Now, here's the thing. When we wrestled and when we rugby tackled, I would instinctively and correctly and rightly and sincerely reduce my strength to be Charlie-sized. When we engaged in little rugby tackles, I would not exert my full adult strength and technique in the rugby tack with Charlie, that would not have gone well for Charlie and therefore that would not have gone well for me. So what did I do? Well, I just, without even thinking about it, I just very sincerely and naturally reduced my strength and my privilege, you could say, to be Charlie sized. Why? Because that's the right thing to do. And when we were wrestling in those moments, well, that, that connection is where the love is. That is where the the bond is that is where we delight in each other and so I didn't stop being fully myself in fact an expression of me being myself is the self-restraint the self-limitation and um, you could say the discipline of holding back so that I could meet Charlie in that love maybe that's a more healthy way to think about the incarnation that God never ceased to be fully himself that Jesus having all of these you could say privileges and strengths and attributes naturally, instinctively, rightly, correctly and authentically self-disadvantaged, self-restrained uh, held himself back to the degree that he would meet us to become, you could say, Charlie-sized. He would meet us in our humanity without having to compromise his divinity. He was still fully who he was but without exercising who he was and it was absolutely and rightly and perfectly done so that Jesus remains fully God whilst at the same time being fully human. Now that perhaps doesn't answer all the questions but it maybe gives us a lens to look through to understand more of the life of Jesus so that when he's not even aware of himself um, that's not because something has been excavated out of God or God's life or the life of the Logos. It's because there is a voluntary and a sincere and an absolute self-restraint so that the human experience is completely legitimate. There is integrity in the whole thing. That's the miracle. That's the beauty. That's the genius of the one we know as Christ. So amazing truths that challenge us and bless us. And so we'll keep pushing forward into this conversation in the days ahead. Till then, peace.